Welcome back to the third week. We're just cruising along through the season already. We're here in the fireside. We're we're chatting it up. Um, was supposed to have Brett Detmar with me, and um, I think my actual guest is going to give me a little insight why he's not here. Um, welcome, Eric Detmar. How's it going, Tim? Good. Good to have you, man. Yeah, good to be here. What's uh, what's going on with Brett? On uh, a long day at work, he's uh, sleeping on the living room floor naked. <laughs> naked? Come on. I swear. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't make this stuff up, Tim. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, maybe he's getting his beauty sleep for tomorrow's ass kick and he's going to get from the narwhals. <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, all right, quick recap. Make it quick. Anything out of the ordinary from week two? I mean, I saw Greg make the catch of a lifetime. Greg did? Greg did. Hmm, interesting. A, one, a one-handed snag. It was one of those look-what-I-found catches. Interesting. Was he out in the field or was he pitching? Uh, he was pitching. Um, so we had uh, Player of the Week was Caleb. Your thoughts? Anything? Um, I don't know. Typical. Typical. Um, Batter of the week was you. You That's an embarrassment. You had 13 RBIs. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Tim, I'm going to be a top five batter this year. Okay. So it's not that big of a surprise, to be honest. I think you got 12 of those RBIs against the Narwhals, so I wouldn't get too cocky. Hey, I almost had a cycle against the Corn Bombers. So. Okay. How'd that game turn out for you? That's uh, we'll play him again. Oh, okay. And yeah. pitch of the week, Jackson Buzia, and he won batter of the week last year, so he's already got one of each. What's uh, I mean, is this guy gonna win MVP this year? Uh, um, he's on the narwhals now, so no. Oh, wow, we're just trashing the narwhals here early. I, I'm just being honest. He's not gonna get as many RBIs. True. <laughs> So anything else? Week two, anything crazy happened? We had a couple of new faces. Um, what about uh, what about Muscle Man? Muscle Man. Oh man, I was I was I was watching that game and he wound up and just, I mean, point blank range. I thought I thought that ball was gonna go through Matt. And then after the first game, he goes, I can't be here this late. At least. Yeah, he did. He had, he did end up leaving. Um, he probably was like needing to do his roids or something. I don't, know. I don't know. I think he lives close to me. I don't know. Maybe not. But he's coming this week, though. He is coming this week. Yeah, he's on the Hawaiians. He got last. Right. He got he got the last spot. So. All right. Before we before we dive into it. I'm doing a new I'm doing a new system this week, but I want to go into a little bit of national talk with you. Um, regionals are three weeks away. We don't have a team. Um, they announced their bracket. Obviously, Griffin Ball is in the bracket. Brett and Caleb are on the regionals team. Is is it something that interests you? Anything the national scene this year? I mean, do you want to be on the team? Are you looking to try to get on it? Or I mean, I. I went two years ago knowing that I couldn't even play, and last year, um, you know, I shut out. I shut out Griffel Ball. I had a good outing against Skibby. I played really well against Ridley Park. I mean, I <clears throat> because I'm a pitcher, the tournament's fun for me. Um, being able to go out there and compete, and so yeah, I mean, I'd always be up for being able to play wherever I can play. So. 
Um, something I've definitely thought about and hope that maybe I can get a chance at. They have, obviously, well, Caleb Brett, and they have this guy, Kyle Lidster. We um, played him week one, and I don't think you were there for Griffin Ball, so I don't think you played Lidster. No, I didn't. But it's hard to it's hard to judge how good he is because Griffin Ball is so much different. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, them three, I think, from what I hear, I've never seen Lidster either are better than you, so you would probably be the – would you say you'd be a number four for Griffin Ball, or do you think Tucker or Buzia would be better? I mean, you said you shut out Griffin Ball in Nationals. Yeah. I mean, you're the third best pitcher in Leroy's history currently. I mean, do you think you deserve I, a spot for, for Griffin Ball's team? I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Buzia and Tucker. They're both phenomenal players in both Griffin Ball and in Leroy. They're both playing pretty well. But, um... I just think the the sheer um, volume of using this type of wiffle ball and um, kind of how our setup is more similar to the national scene. I feel like just being more of a veteran and knowing what I'm going into, what I'm throwing, um, I feel like that is just going to help me more than just their sheer athleticism and being able to – so being able to throw for me, I think I can pitch better than both of them. When it comes to Linster, I've never seen him throw this type of wiffle ball, so can't really say anything about him. And then Caleb and Brett, obviously, um, I would put ahead of myself. I think they're both better than me and have shown that in the national tournament. Yeah, I. Uh, this this tournament is is all about pitchers, and if I if I was managing this team and I had all the options I have, I would bring you. Caleb, Brett, Tucker, Buzea, and Lidster. I bring all six. And yeah. I would have Buzea, Tucker, and you pitch a round robin game. And then based on how all three of you do, if you get a you know, shitty shitty matchup in one of them, throw one of you in the, in a double limb game. But even even with re, even with regionals coming up, there's four or five games there and it'd be stupid when you have six dominant pitchers to not bring six Dominant pitchers, in my opinion, but is yeah, what it is. We even we saw it ourselves. We saw we saw ourselves pretty much lose the tournament because we had to throw Caleb for yep. however many innings that was against Hats, and it just yeah ruined any chance we had at moving on. So yeah, and I mean, for the record, you came in that game in the Ridley Park game and shut him out. So woulda, shoulda, coulda. If I would have thrown you in that Ridley Park game the whole game, maybe we would have tied him, or you know. Yeah. Would have been a different outcome, but um, other than that, say you're not on the team. Say the say the team is what it is now. Are they contenders? Do you think that this team competes at a high level in the tournament? I think they do. I think I from what I saw from them last year, they can they can hit the ball. I know I know Rat's one of the best hitters in tournament uh, history, and. With the addition of Caleb in the batting order, I feel like they're going to be a very dangerous hitting team. But what they missed last year was pitching, and they added two of the best pitchers in the nation, in my opinion. Um, so I think they're definitely contenders and can definitely, uh, um, if they get the right slots, uh, I feel like they can possibly win a tournament. Yeah, yeah, I would put I would put Rat. No, I would start it. I would start it, Caleb. Musea, Rat, and I would throw anybody else in that four slot. I don't even care. Yeah. And and keep that four man lineup, run that four man lineup through the whole DE, and then pitch, um, and then have six pitchers like I said, and I don't know, have that other eighth spot as another batter or something. But anyways, I'm not running the team, so this isn't a national podcast. I've said what I want to about that. Let's dive into. Um, we had eight signings in the last 48 hours. Yes, we did. Huge impact um, oh, yeah. to the teams. And the first two weeks, we've had 10 and 11 free agents sign up. And this week, we only needed five. So we had 37 rostered players attending this week, which I am absolutely thrilled about. And um, we had five free agents to fill, this, to fill this spot. So we're maxed out. We ended up having to turn down a couple people, which, I mean... It's crazy, but it's sad. 
Yeah, it sucks, but at the same time, I remember three months ago when you, Caleb, Greg, and Brett said, there's no way we get 11 teams, and here we are. I never said that. Don't, don't try to toot your own, your own <laughs> horn. Actually, never I, said that. actually, I think me and you are the only ones who actually believed we could do it. Yeah, that's why I'm, there, that's why I'm leader of outreach committee. That's right. I, we both have belief. All right, we'll take we'll take credit for everything that's happened. Yeah, pretty much. Caleb and Brett really haven't done anything. No. Obviously, Brett's laying on the living room floor right now, which shows you his uh, <laughs> dedication. So. And Greg's Greg recorded a podcast three months ago and still trying to get it out. He thinks he's going to get it out tonight. <laughs> I'll I'll be recording this and I'll probably get it out quicker than him. Um, no, we love them guys, but uh, so let's. I lost track. I don't even know what we were talking about. Oh, so eight signings. We got. I'm gonna do a new setup for this show. Last two shows I went through every game. It kind it kind of got boring and whatever. So now I'm gonna do the. We're gonna do the two Facebook live games. We're gonna break down those two games. Those are our big games. Those are the games we want to showcase to. Other people who are watching. And then after that, we're just going to go through each team quickly, give the lineups, the rosters for that team, um, a couple statistics maybe, and uh, some notes on them. Maybe a question for you on each team. Beautiful. You like that setup better? I like it. Okay. So let's dive into the first Facebook Live game. And you hit me up with the with the lineups. Um, it's the Liners and the tr- my team, the Truckers. Yeah, so for the liners, we got uh, Caleb Bianchman, obviously, and the new signing he puts in the two slot, Jason Hilligans, and then James Hayward and Justin Dykinga to close that out. For the truckers, it's uh, yours truly, Tim Wilcher, Jack Hilligans in the two slot, Grant Reinhout, and to close it out, I don't even know if I know this dude, Neil Kruzwick. Does, does he play in this league anymore? I think he won the championship with you like six months ago. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, I wrote there in the show sheet notes, number one. Can you please read me the number one note? Gosh, you are so annoying. Just please read it for me. Tim Walter and Caleb Youngman are the only pitchers with a zero ERA with five-plus innings pitch. That is right. Dude, you have played nobody. <laughs> You have played zero good hitters. We played Jackson Buzia and Jim Tucker week one. Okay, that was their first week playing here. They they, they had no idea what they were doing. Jackson had seven homers that day and won better of the week. So you're telling me that you've just been throwing gas? I've been throwing absolute gas. Kind of like I did in Griffin Ball last week. Lost us the game. <laughs> uh, and you kept wanting to go more. I won us the first game, though. You're lucky I had those two homers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and you had a half a beer and you were toast. Yeah, that's true. Okay, my second note Jack versus Jason. Okay, what's their relationship? Are they uh, they're cousins, right? They're first cousins, yeah. Do they, uh, I mean, do they talk? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Hogan's, they. They have family parties like every other day, I swear. So this is going to be intriguing. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually... I also believe they work together. Ooh. They used, they used to work together. Doing landscaping? Yeah, for uh, for their uncle, which is another Hilligans. Oh, my goodness. There's just way too many of these guys. <sighs> is Jason a left-hander, too? He's a left, left-handed hitter, a right-handed so Lander's got two lefties now. Interesting. Um, wind's supposed to be blowing in from right field at about five mile an hour clip. So it's not going to be affected too much. Um, the Lander's are five and zero against the Truckers, including a sweep of us in the quarterfinals last year. Um, who do you got winning this one? Any, any anything you can think of in this game? You know, I think a couple of things are going to happen in this game. I think one, I think Jack is going to find himself in this game. I think he's going to pitch well, and I think he's going to hit well. 
I think a live game is the right time for him to break out of his shell, and I think he's going to do it. And he's playing his cousin, so why not? What a better time. Another thing I think is going to happen, I think Justin Dekinga is going to give up some runs in this one. He hasn't in the past few games, and I think that's going to come to an end here against a very good hitting Truckers team. I'm going to take the Truckers in this one. It's a little bit of a shocker. I think you are going to give up one run, but you're going to keep the damage low. I think Jack's going to keep the damage low. It's up to Grant and Neal to be able to pitch well. If they can pitch well, I think the Truckers have this game just because of their hitting. Sorry, I just got some breaking news that I will uh, share with you in a bit here. All right. It's going to be good. But, um, so who did you, uh, sorry, who did you say would win? I said you guys would. Oh, interesting. I think this is going to be a good matchup. I think we really have to focus on limiting Caleb's ability to get his team going. I think we got to, and the first thing right away, just work on making contact. Just if, if he starts getting strikeout after strikeout after strikeout, his team usually feeds off that. If we can get some contact, get some balls in play, get the fielders in the game, um, maybe make some errors. Um, if, if we can get contact and they make an error out there, you're going to see it in Caleb's face, and his team's going to the, the team's going to get nervous, and it's just it'll it'll be a breakdown. So that's and what I I'm, saw. I saw some of that in the Gusters game where they made some errors in the field, and Caleb was just very flustered and yeah, almost cost them the game. Yep. So I think that'll happen. Um, he's pitching two innings. I obviously have to pitch well. Um, but Matt Dykstra, Austin Gibson on the mic. You excited for the hear, to hear them? I'm excited that Austin Gibson is coming back. I miss, I miss my boy AG. I think they're going to do the second best job on the mic um, this year behind yours, really. And... Uh, I think it's I think it's gonna be a good time. I think I think Matt and Austin get along pretty well. They're gonna be pretty funny out there. Yeah, I think so too. I um I enjoy Matt, so I uh Austin um he's in my profile pic for Twitter, so there's a special <laughs> place in my heart for him. <laughs> second game, second game. Hawaiians, Sultans of Soy, both two and oh. And this is where I'm gonna announce the breaking news. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Micah Hescott has just canceled on Robbie. Oh. So that's another four dollar hit to the Sultans. No, three dollars, wouldn't it be? Or two dollars? They still have, they still have enough players. Oh you're right. They still have enough players. So it'd just be a two dollar hit. Correct. That's gonna help them. But Andrew Sitter is um Wanting to play, so I just texted Sitter. I might have an update if Sitter, if Sitter might take that spot, which would be a huge upgrade for the Sultans. Yeah. Unfortunately, they play you. Yeah. They do for me. <laughs> but in this game, they play the Hawaiians. Um, what you got for lineups? For the Hawaiians, we got uh, big muscle man David Buzak here, at number one. Cameron Varlon in number two slot, Mitchell Gerlach in the three spot, and Sam Stahl in the four spot. I'm pretty sure I only recognize one of those names. <laughs> Sam. Anyways. Sultans, we got Lucas Meekham on the one spot, Big John Enningberg in the two spot, a question mark in the three spot, it was Mike Ascott. And then in the fourth spot, we got Robin Zanstra. Um, I was about to say that this was the second straight week the, full, the roster was full for the Sultans, but that's not going to happen. They went 0-2 last week with the full roster. Um, so both these teams are going to take a penalty hit because Austin actually gave me his roster with Tucker in it. And now the Hawaiians are going in with the... Going in with the roster completely different than last week. Sam is the only returning player on that roster. Hmm. Um, 
Other than that, there's not much intrigue in this one, I don't think. No, not really. I think this is going to be a uh, an easy win for the Sultans. Uh, yeah, especially if they get Sitter. And yeah, it's going to be awful. Will David? Will Dave stay for the second game? If he doesn't, that that be uh, would that give them more penalties? No, because he's a free agent. Uh, but um. Also, they have to wear the right colored shirts. So, last time the Sultans were on TV, they had one player wearing... John Engberg was the only one who wore the right color shirt. So, we'll see if they wear the right color shirt this time. All right. Um, and Mitchell Gerlach is going to make his debut. Brand new player. I think it's, it's Gerlach. Gerlach. He's actually friends with Cameron Barlon, so they're going to play together. So, we'll see how they mesh. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that is cute. Your brother's on the mic in Jake Van Vuren, so is he getting his beauty rest maybe for the show tomorrow? I don't know. They're they're going to be in bad shape. I just know that. <laughs> they're going to be in bad game, So after the first one, it's just going to be... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be driving home. I know that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Check both those games out live. Um, sorry about last week. My phone... The battery, okay, you're supposed to get your battery fixed when it's at 80% battery capacity, and mine was at 19, so it couldn't even stay on with a charge. <laughs> That's how bad it was. So I got a new battery. Um, it seems to be doing a lot better. I think we'll be in good shape. So Where'd now, you, Where'd you go to get that done? I went, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I went to a place called CPR. It's right on Route 30. It used to be called We Fix It. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, like it was, uh, I think forty bucks. Oh, not too bad. And one time I brought my phone in there, it wasn't charging, and they cleaned the charging port, and they gave me my phone back, and they're like, "All right, see ya." I'm like, "Well, how much do I owe you?" They're like, "Oh no, you're good." Yeah, I had to do that the other day. I cleaned my charging port out, and now charging my better. So I mean, they're they're good dudes over there. Good dudes. That's what I like to hear. I'll probably make a stop over there then. <laughs> Look for the big CPR sign. And this podcast is brought to you by CPR Zone Repairs. <laughs> oh, side note, they also fixed both my screens I cracked last year from wiffle balls hitting them. And that is on video. That's yes, that is on video. Thanks, Caleb. All right, we're at 22 minutes already. we got to go through the lineups quick. All right, let's do it. Start with the Noble Narwhals. They're 0-4. New roster additions are Kyle Schaff and Jackson Buzia. Um, their lineup is going to be Jackson Buzia, Kyle Schaff, Greg Gerling, and Alec Gerlach. I think you said? Gerlach. Gerlach. There you go. Um, they play versus the Corn Bombers on PNC, and then they play versus the Badgers on Fenway. They're home for both games. What do they need to do to win? And what do you think um, these additions will help them with? Is is Jackson enough to change the culture in the Narwhal Nation? Well, what they need to do to win is to show up against the Corn Bombers. They're not beating the Bush League Badgers, um, in my opinion. But uh, Corn Bombers team without um, Kyle Lautenbach is not a good team. And... I think they have a chance to win that game. Does Jackson change the culture? I think he does. I think he's, I think he's a winning player. You know, he won he won Griffith Ball Championship last year, and not only Jackson, but I think Kyle Kyle's going to bring in um, some good energy and insight. Uh, he plays college baseball, so he definitely knows what it takes to win. I think both of them do. I think Greg did a great job in both of these signings. And I think this, I don't think this made their team a contender for the title, but I think it made it more competitive, which is, is good to see. Um, yeah. Do you want to take a stab at Kyle Schaaf's batting average this year? Ooh. I don't think it's that good. I'm going to say 330. 281. Wow. Yeah. 281 batting average. He's got uh, nine hits in, in about 32 at bats. So he's at oh, two. He, he's a PO in college, so he doesn't bat. 
Oh, okay. Um, but that's still pitiful. Yeah, he does. He does lead the league in wins, though. He has three wins. He has a five ERA and six innings pitched, seven Ks. Pretty good for a, a rookie. Yeah. And a 308 opponent's batting average. Um, Jackson Buzia, though, has a 567 batting average, leads the league in homers with 11. But do you want to know his opponent's batting average? Yeah. 167. Wow. 11 Ks and 18 at bats. Is that the most Ks, or is Caleb? Here? Caleb's got the most. I think there's a couple others ahead of Jackson too. I I think Jackson's. They now have two pitchers. They have Jackson and Kyle. I think they'll they'll have two pitchers. Um, Jackson's gonna have to lead the bats. Kyle's gonna have to come around, and and obviously they have to find that fourth guy. But yeah. I agree with you. I think they beat the Bombers. I think they lose to the Badgers. So, uh, next up, the 10th seed, they're 0-3, backdoor sliders. They made no new roster additions this week, um, but for the first time this year, their full team will be there. Jordan Moselle will lead it off, John Gibson, Quinn Cloghesse, and Brad Kamstra. Um, they play the Flying Hawaiians on Fenway and then the Liners on Wrigley. They're away for both those games. Is John enough to win them games? Will they get their first win this week? What's your thoughts on this team? I'll tell you what, I think they can get two wins this week. Wow. I think Jordan did a phenomenal job uh, with the lineup here. He got, he got John going first in the second game, so John will be pitching two. And Caleb will only be pitching one in that second game. So we're going to see a lot of slow pitch in that game, and I think John can get a lot of runs scored in that game as well. Now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a close one there. But I think they can beat the Flying Hawaiians. They're gonna. S- Sam Stahl is really the only pitcher in that lineup, so um, I think the addition of John is gonna be huge for them. I agree. I just don't know if John's gonna be ready to rock. I don't know if he's gonna be able to just pick up the ball and just get right into it. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm I'm surprised that. Jordan didn't make any moves this week. Jordan always has faith in his guys. Almost, it's almost a negative how much he you know trusts his guys to come and ex- expects them to come and and um, gives them leeway, so to speak. Yeah. Um. There's not much here. I mean, this team struggled. They Quinn. Quinn only has four at-bats. He didn't even pitch an inning in the first game. Brad's got a um, – he took two losses. He has th- only three Ks and four innings. Moselle gave up – he's got a 12.0 ERA. Um, Jordan's batting average is 250 and Campers is 167. So John's going to have to really, really push this team. I don't see them beating the Liners. There's no, I, I just don't see it. Caleb's going to have a field day if it's blowing out on Wrigley on these guys. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. But. And uh, right now, currently, Alex Friedman has more home runs this year than Caleb Youngman's in two less games. So Caleb's going to be out to prove something. Yeah. Um, but I do got them beating the Hawaiians for their first win. I I, I think it's up to Moselle, truthfully. I think John's going to always come out and be a competitor, but Moselle's got to step it up. Yeah. He's a better player than that. Especially because he's pitching two innings that game. Yeah. Um, next up, as the ninth-ranked team, two-time defending champion, one in three Corn Bombers. Does that name sound familiar to you? No, oh, I remember being a part of the Jaeger Corn Bombers. <laughs> they signed Kyle Zydema, and their lineup this week will be Brett Detmar, Jake Revere, and Kyle Zydema, and then their fourth batter will be Ryan Barnes from the Clams as he comes over for that game. Um, they play just one game because they're on the mic, and they they're away at the they're away at the Narwhals on PNC. Um, how 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 worried are you? Do you think that Brett is about this season starting one and three? 
I'm keep going back to the fact that he's sleeping naked in the living room. I don't think he really cares. He <laughs> knows. Um, I, he knows that once Colin gets in the swing of things, that, and once Colin and Jake are there, they're going to start winning games. There's no way this team ends up in in the uh, the bottom four with what's with the rest of the team that are in here. So I don't think he's worried too much right now. I think this would be a big win for them against the Narwhals. Um, Brett seems to be the pitcher whisperer, so to speak. Kyle Zeidema goes into this team with 31.76 ERA. I'll repeat that. A 31.76 ERA. Yeah, that's thanks to yours, truly. He's um pitched five and two-thirds innings. Do you know how many runs that is in five and two-thirds innings? It's got to be like... Close to 36. 30. It's 30 runs. Yeah. 30 runs he's given up, and he's faced 54 batters. Well, he, he did take a picture like Neil Cruz with to win a championship, so I wouldn't doubt him. <sighs> that means t- he, 24 batters didn't reach home plate, but 30 did when he faced them. More batters scored than didn't score. <laughs> That's how bad it is. His opponent's batting average is 685. Oh my gosh. Oh. I'm surprised we haven't seen more bats thrown. Uh, this is... I thought, that, I thought that was kind of a side of my thing. You know? Yeah. He's a pretty good batter. I'll give him that. Kyle's got five homers. And... Has a 400 batting average. He's actually a better batter than Brett is currently throughout the year. More homers, more ribbies, more better or better batting average, and he's played two games with the Narwhals, so give him credit for that. Yeah. Um. Do you think? Do you think he'll beat the Noble Narwhals? No. Yeah. I think we talked about that already. I think the Narwhals... The hitting, on, the hitting on the other side is just too much. They don't have enough good pitching right now to to make up for the hitting on the other side. Yeah. And if, if Jake throws a 25-pitch homer, I'm, I'm going to yell. Like I, I, He can't be doing that. He was supposed to come last week, and he ended up staying on the boat, I think. So we'll, yeah, he did. we'll so see if that happens there. again. Next up, Leroy Truckers. I didn't make any signings. My lineups, me, Jack, Grant, Neil. Um, we play the Liners at home and the Clams at home. Um, a couple things I want to get up, get into. I want your thoughts on the lineups for what I went out with. And then Grant messaged me he wanted to be our team's ace. And I want to hear your opinion on that. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Lineup-wise... Put yourself first, which with a zero ERA, I figured that you would. Um, I mean, I think you did a good job with the lineups. You put you and Jack 1-2 against the Liners. I think that's a, a tougher game than the Clams with Austin coming back. I don't think he's going to be pitching that well. And Matt hasn't been pitching that well. And they have Zaitama, who we just talked about. And Barnes isn't that good of a pitcher, so... I don't think you guys have to pitch insanely well in that Clams game to win it. Um, and I want a Jack to get as many at-bats as he can in that game, which he would start that game. Yep. So. So, yeah, I think, I think you guys have a have possibly a two-win two-win week. I'm uh. I've I've kept going with this this Jack and Neil spread out um with the two power hitters. I don't know how much longer I'm going to do it, but. What's your thoughts on Grant being an ace? Let me read his let me read his pitching stat line for this season. Four games played, 0 and 2 record, a 16.36 ERA, three and two thirds innings pitched. He's given up 10 runs. His opponent's batting average is 560 with six Ks. Do I do I really do I honestly have to talk about this? He legit was going on about it in the chat for about 15 minutes. I think they're... Yeah. 
I mean, I saw Neil pitch in, in, in the playoffs last year, and I think that he's better than those stat lines that I just heard. He, yeah, Neil's this year, he has a 9.0 ERA in two innings pitched. Okay. He's actually the second best pitcher because Jack's ERA is 9.82 right now. Yeah, Grant's, Grant's not the ace. He's got to realize his spot on this team and just run with it. If he if he continually gets better and continually proves to get better, then I'll do it. But, I mean, with that stat line, you can't. I'm sorry, I can't. No, yeah. I need Jack's bat up top, and, and I'm pitching very well right now until that – it goes away. I don't know. Yeah, there's no way. So I got I got us beating the clams by a lot, and I don't know. Yeah, I still got us beating the liners. So I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to get two wins there. Yeah, I think you All right, next team, Flying Hawaiians. Um, new roster additions: Jim Tucker, Cameron Varlan. Uh, their lineup is going to be Sam Stahl, David Buzik, Cameron Verlan, and Mitchell Gerlach, or whatever you said. Gerlach. 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 It's a silent J. There's no J. <laughs> There's no J in there. Uh, we talked about both these games already. They're home versus sliders, away versus Sultan. So more and more... Uh, um... I want to talk to you. Do you agree with Austin's moves? Not agree with Austin's moves? How do you feel about what? Because I, the Hawaiians was a big thing in the in the Leroy chat the last yeah. two days. So get into that. I, I I don't understand why Austin would trade. He traded Kyle Rain, or he dropped Kyle Reinhardt. Who else did he drop? Shane Anderson. Shane so Anderson. Got two guys that were going to be there this this week for two free agents, and he's got two free agents in his lineup right now. When he could have two guys that are rostered and wouldn't be taking any hits, so it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and on the on the the stat aspect of it, uh, I think dropping Shane was. Foolish. However, he learned. I don't know. I think he signed them for like what forty, forty something dollars. Shane? Yeah. 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 Shane was forty dollars, and this year he's currently only worth thirty-four. Yeah. So I guess in that aspect, you know, maybe he's hoping that no one will sign Shane and he's going to go back and get him. But I mean, at this point in the Leroy chat, I don't know if that's if that's going to happen. Um. Shane, Shane's made quite the scene. Yeah, he's had some disgust with the Hawaiians, and I, I don't blame him. He's played great. I watched some of the videos, and Shane was actually doing the stat book and keeping the stats. Um, listen, Sam's going to be doing beers this whole night. Who's going to do the stat book for this team? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be rough. They're already getting hit with a $4 penalty because they, they don't have their minimum roster and they, the roster was wrong. So they're going to get hit with more penalties, and they're going to have to drop one of their players that they just signed. So this, yeah. is, a, this is a rough move, and I think Kyle and Shane are going to have the last laugh in this one. I think they will. I think, yeah, I think they will too. Um, and Kyle gets picked up by the Dusters right after it. So yeah. I, I don't think he, needs, he really has a problem with it. I, I, I guarantee Shane will get signed by someone in the next uh, next week. Um, he was the last person to get dropped, and at that point, everyone that could sign someone already did. So I think with next week's changes, that might be turned around. Um, I, it was going through the mind, but, you know. Yeah, I got him going 0-2. Austin made some big mistakes. I know he's overseas. I know he doesn't care, but I think he made some big Big mistakes this week. I, I I loved the moves to start, but without Jim Tucker there, I think yeah. it was a little early. Yep. Agreed. Sultan's a soy. No new roster additions. This team's still over the cap. Robbie Zanster, Lucas Medima, John Engberg, Micah Hescott. They're home versus the Sluggers, your team, and they're home versus the Hawaiians. 
A um, couple questions. Is this a team a contender as it sits? Which really isn't a question because they're going to get hit with another penalty tonight and they're going to sink even farther. Does Robbie even know what's going on? Does he care? Does he know there's penalty caps? I mean, what's your thoughts I, on this? I try. I tried to help him out. I tried to make a trade with him, but he didn't want to do it. It would have put him under cap, but he didn't want to do it. So. Can you say what the trade was? Yeah, um, Lucas Miedemo for Luke Prince. Oh, that would have been a stupid trade on his part. Well, it would have helped him out. Luke Prince isn't a bad player, so and Luke, Luke Prince is friends with John Ingberg and Micah, so they would have all gotten along. Is Luke Prince showing up this week? No, he has to pick up his dad from the airport. Who's he's in Seattle? Oh, I thought he had to go to Wendy's tonight. Uh, he's getting a, he's getting a burger at Wendy's. Oh, goodness, you know he likes some chocolate, some chocolate shakes they got there. <laughs> God. Oh, six pizza nuggets with extra mayo. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Anyways. No one else knows what we're talking. I about. know. Maybe one other person that listens. Probably Matt. Probably Matt's the only no, one who Matt knows. Matt doesn't know. You tried telling him last week. Uh, um, they had their full roster there last week, and they lost both games. Micah has a 27.82 ERA. Lucas has a 21 ERA. John Enningberg has a 13.20 ERA. Oh, that's... Sorry. Um... That's, he can hit, though. Except for Micah, yes, you're right. Yeah, I mean, okay. This team can hit. They have, well, John's got six homers already in four games. Robbie's got three and two. Lucas had a really bad first week. Yeah, he did. He went, uh, he went two for 12, or uh, four for 12. But, um, I don't know. I, I don't Robbie's. Robbins is screwing himself over. He's never going to be able to get rid of Micah. So no, he's not. And eventually, he's gonna. I I feel like he's gonna have to drop John because Lucas is a high value player. But actually, John's playing better than Lucas, so I don't know. John seemed to yeah. show a lot more interest this year than the years past. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. He added me on he added me on Snapchat too, so Oh did he? Next up, Diamond Dusters. What'd you send him? I don't I think I waved at him. You know how you could do the little wave? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Diamond Dusters, three and one. New roster edition, Samantha Gramala and Kyle Reinhout. Their lineup will be Marty. Rizal, Alex Friedman, Kyle Reinhardt, Ryan. Ryan. What? What? I, I don't understand what. I'm, what is he doing? <laughs> I'll, I'll explain it. He's he, Ryan Bogus is in the fourth spot. He's away at the Badgers, away at the Sluggers. Give Marty a grade before we get into it. As a first-time owner, is is a lot of this out of his hands? What do you think? What, what do you think he's doing before? I'm going to give him a C, and the only reason I'm giving him that high is because his team is three and up, and is three and one. But this team could be so much better. I I, lit, I literally almost almost message messages message did, did I can't even say the Good word. Good grief. Messaged. There it is. The guy trying to help him out because. I, I don't understand what he's doing. There's there's so many good free agents out there, and he's just he goes and picks up Samantha Gramala. Why? That was I think that was to get his salary down. His salary doesn't matter right now. You pick why do you, why do you pick someone up that's not going to be there? You still have to. He can't make any moves until he's under the cap. So he used that Samantha signing to put him under the cap to let him sign a player. All right. 
Um, I think I. I don't know. I think he's got to get rid of Friedman. Friedman Friedman's too expensive. What is he? Thirty seven dollars. Yeah, thirty. 30 something like that but Friedman also had three homers in his opening opening day but he struggled from the mound he had an 18.0 year I can name a couple a couple of the the rookies in this league that I would rather have than Friedman not not anything against Friedman I just feel like he's too expensive for what he brings to the table right now if you're 37 bucks you got to be throwing be yeah, and um, he's just had bad luck. He had Gr- Griffin Smith's been injured. Um, Elijah got a new job. Yep. And then Alex didn't. He Alex had a very stressful last couple weeks with graduation and stuff. So I don't, I don't yep. bash him for not coming. Wiffle ball is fun, and he was trying to graduate. He had finals. I get, fine. I give him credit, but. What it did happen, it did screw him, and um, I think Kyle's a good fit to this team. Um, I think Marty and Kyle will will mesh well together. I just don't know who they're going to get okay. for that fourth spot because they're going to need more pitching because Friedman and Kyle won't won't be able to get this team far. Yeah. But Marty's having an, an, an historic season. He's similar to Caleb. I mean, he's he's winning games by himself. Um, 15 Ks in eight innings, a 1.50 ERA. So we'll see. We'll see how far he can take it. Yeah. I hope he becomes a, that. And he was upset. He, I, I, I don't think he wanted to be an owner again next year. I, I hope he does. I, I feel like he's doing a, a good job for what's handed to him. So. Yeah, I mean, V3-1, like I said, you can't take that away from him. No, so, no. He's and, winning. And he's got he's Ryan... He's got, versus what you got to do. He's got Ryan Vogus this week, so he'll give you a, t- a tough test. He plays you guys in the second game, and... Oh, and he's got the Badgers, so he'll have two tough games, no, but... But... Yeah. We'll see how he does. Next up, Leroy... Yeah, I think that, that second game will be good. Oh, I think it will be too. You guys both got lucky with your free agents. Yeah. Oh, an interesting matchup in that second game. Kyle Reinhardt and Shane Anderson are both due up second to pitch, and they were former teammates. Oh, yeah. So. Pretty good. Um, Leroy Clams, they signed Ryan Barnes. Their lineup tomorrow will be Matt, Austin, Ryan, and Kyle Zydema. They play the Truckers at Minute Maid. Um, I think we talked about this struggle a little bit, but how does this affect guys like Andrew Sitter and Jeremiah, who I, I still haven't heard back from Sitter yet, but how does this affect guys that don't show up, and how bad did that affect teams like the Clams? Well, I mean, the Clams were ranked number one coming into the season from the sheer fact that they had the best top three players. They had- had probably the worst fourth player, other than the liners, but they had the best top, the best one, two, three lineup, and because of that, owners ranked them first. Losing Sitter loses your one, two, three, and I think it makes this team a lot worse. Um, I, I think I think it's it sucks for Sitter and Jeremiah. You know, they can't really do anything about it. It's not like they don't want to come. They just have work and they don't know when they're going to get out. So, but it's tough for owners to kind of take a gamble on them saying, oh, I might take a hit this week because they, they're not going to be able to get out of out of work on time. So, Sinner and Jeremiah are both phenomenal players in this league. And I think it's going to be interesting to see if anyone picks them up. Um, what I what I created, I think, is, is working. I think um, I, I want to have consistent players on teams. And yeah. like you said, it's not on their it's not their fault, but at the same time, it's so much we can do things like what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Because we know they're coming. We can we could pump up games and I also helped them out by 
by doing the expanded rosters. When expanded rosters come, these two players will be signed on a team and they'll be able to show up and come um, for some games if they can make it. So they'll still be on a team and on a roster. It's just, for now, it's 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 about consistency. And, and we're, listen, we had to turn guys away today. And I'm trying to get a hold of some of them now because of uh, Micah Hescott. But mm-hmm. I'm not going to turn guys away for a guy that might show up. Yeah. So that's my thoughts on it. No hard no, feelings. That makes sense. No hard feelings to sit on Jeremiah. We're just we're just getting too big. Yeah. We're too big time. Three more teams. We'll go through these here. Bush League Badgers, two and one, new roster additions, two name two first names, Brian Travis. Lineups Wes Ellis, Jared Youngman's B T and they signed Andrew Felday for the day. Home against the Dusters, away against the Narwhals. Jared still keeps messing with his third guy and is yet to find a fourth. Your thoughts on the Badgers? I think they have the, now the best one, two, three. Um, they're the most dangerous hitting team in the in the league for sure. So that's they're they're going to be scary for pitchers to go up against. On the other hand, in the field, I know. I, I, I don't really know how Wes and Jared have been doing. They both struggled against my team when I played them. But Brian Travis has been atrocious at the Mahomes, to say the least. And we'll see if their hitting can make up for that pitching. Interesting points. And they're both squ- they're both straight on with looking at the stats. Um, out of the three, I'm going to name three averages, and you got to match the average to the player. All right. One average is 421, one average is 444, and one average is 581. I'm going to go 581 with Wes. Or no. Ooh. I'm going to go 581 with Wes, 444 for Brian, and another one for Jared. You were right with one of them. Jared is 421. Wes is 444, and Brian Travis has a 581 batting average. Mm, yeah. Um, he, had big, he had a big game in that high-scoring game with the Clams and the Normals. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. But um, he also has an 18.0 year He's given up 11 runs in three and two-thirds. Valde is um, – he's shown a lot of hype. First week, he came in, was ready to go, and then second week, he couldn't make it. Um, I'm interested to see what he does because I think that he struggled week one, and I think if he has a decent season, he'll be in that 20 range, and I think he's going to be a big difference maker for a team like the Clams or the Dusters. Yeah. Um, and I think he'll get signed to that fourth spot for a couple of those guys, and if he can if he can get the swing of things, I think uh, he could be a difference maker for one of those teams. I completely agree. Um, I don't think they lose tomorrow. Yeah, me neither. So, but Jared does have to find that fourth guy. Yeah, and I think it'll be really interesting. Or maybe it is Felde. Maybe maybe Felde goes to the to the Badgers. That'd be dangerous. That would be very dangerous. He has to play worse this week, though. Yeah, he does. Or no, yeah. Because Jared's Jared Jared's got like three guys that are forty and thirty salaries. Yeah. Um, then your team. Ranked second. New Ross Traditions, um, which was a while ago, was Robert Warren. Your lineup's going to be Detmar, you, Garrett Lytle, Shane Anderson, Robert Warren. You play the Sultans and the Dusters. Um, no Luke Prince. Is Wendy an issue? And what's your thoughts on Robert Warren's debut? There's no issue with Wendy. First off, he's just picking his, <laughs> he's just picking his father up from the airport. Interesting. He's, he's, show, he's shown a lot of hype. He's really excited to play. Um, he's even said he'll pay for their, his jersey. Oh, so, wow. yes, he's going to come. Um, Warren, on the other hand, I'm, I'm, I was hyped about this trade. He's $13. I think he's going to play. All I need him to do is play like a, a mid-20 player, which I think he's very capable of. I've watched him be able to pitch the ball at a – Fantastic rate um, against the Clams. Um, consistency is the big question mark there in the mound, and I think um, with just a little bit of tweaking, I think um, it'll be right there. Um, 
the biggest thing for us this week, I think, is going to be uh, Garrett's pitching. He struggled a little bit from the mound um, against the Bombers, but I think he's going to come around and I think will be a very dangerous team. Um, yeah, I, I was very upset about this trade when it happened. Um, an interesting stat for Robert Warren is he's pitched three innings and he has eight strikeouts. Mm-hmm. which tells me that he can get guys out striking him out, and it also tells me that his 22.0 ERA and 15 hits he's allowed is maybe a lot to do with some fielding behind him. Yeah. If the only way he's getting outs are Ks, who's making plays in the field? So um, he could be a big pickup for you. I think Shane's going to have some vengeance, so he'll play great. Garrett's got a 6.0 ERA in four innings. He's doing fine. Um, your bats are lights out. Shane Anderson's 500. You're 619. Garrett's 409. Robert Warren's actually 375. Um, so yeah, I think you'll be. I think you'll be all right. I th- I think the Dusters game will be interesting with Vogus, and I think uh, whoever the Sultans get will determine your outcome in that one. Yeah. I think we got two this week, two dubs. When are you getting your jersey sooner? Uh, the order was in last week, so it should be coming in one, two weeks. Did uh, Hoosier Haulers sponsor? They did. Ooh, shout out to Hoosier Haulers. Yeah, shout you out need to it. Hoosier Haulers. Uh, jersey goes real clean. So I'm excited about that. If you need any, uh, doing any demo or anything, they got uh, rollbacks that you could... Put your garbage in and stuff. So, yeah. Do you know Those anything? Are, uh, do you know anything about Hoosier Haulers? Yeah, of course I do. They're they're sponsoring. Okay. Last team, Lake County Liners, new additions: Jason Hilligans. It's going to be Caleb, Jason, James, Justin. They're away versus the Truckers at Harambe and home versus the Sliders on Wrigley. We talked about the Har- Harambe game. My only question is, Caleb, and I'm going to don this team, the Jays. Caleb and the Jays, is it going to be enough to win? Sounds like a band. (laughs) Caleb and the Jays, here on 92.4. Caleb and the Jays. It'd be like a a smooth (laughs) jazz band, you know? Yeah. Just hanging out. Uh, Their season isn't going to be like a smooth jazz band. You don't think so? I don't think so. You, if you look at, if you look, I mean, I've had a lot of trust in Caleb. I've said it from the beginning. It's not going to be an easy out. They're not going to be bad. But every year, Caleb's had a star with him. He had John last year. He had Robbie the year before that. He doesn't have a star on this team. He's going to have too big of a load every game to to carry for his team. I think it's going to, I think Decca's going to start giving up more runs. I don't think he can continue to to pitch the way he's been pitching. Hayworth hasn't been pitching well. I think Jason Milligans is a good ac- acquisition to this team, but I don't think I don't think it's enough to win a championship if that's the question. I think they can still win games and a lot of them, but I don't think they're at the top of my list for contenders. Yeah. I, I picture this is a perfect season because we've said this about LeBron, James, and basketball. He's always had stars with him, and I guess you could say he's got Kevin Love this year, but he really doesn't have anybody. Yeah. And I feel like Caleb's going to have to do what LeBron's had to do this year, is just carry everything. Um, Justin has a 2.40 ERA. He's got a 167 average, but the stat that hits me is in five innings pitched, he has only five Ks. That means that 10 of his outs – came by fielding. Yep. Um, can can Caleb do that all game? Maybe. I mean, his... And the other thing I look at is that Caleb has zero home runs, which means he's been going against the wind every game. He's got... I think he's got two, actually. Oh, he does? Yeah, I he's got he, two. Well, he had, he had zero before last week. He did. He so had zero last the week. First week. The first week they were going against the wind. Last week, Caleb only had two, so... They probably were going against another... I know they were in their second game. They were going against the wind. Yeah. So, 
I think Dakinga has been getting a little lucky with his pitching, and I think he's going to run into a team like the Sultans or even you guys this week. If the if the wind's blowing out, you you guys will have a. I think you guys will have a, just a dig fast off of him, but yeah, and John Gibson he plays in the second game if Wrigley's blowing out. Yeah, could get a so, hold of. Uh, could get a hold of that. So I, I think that we tend to believe what Caleb says, and he's backed it up this first two weeks with with four wins, and yeah. his way of doing things is getting fear. And, and accumulating wins and just having that presence of the mound of, of we're undefeated or we're so good that teams just go into the game and just lay down to them. Yeah. And um, like you said, there's two studs, and if I think if teams compete with this team, I think they could have games. They, they won last week's games by one point to the Dusters or one run to the Dusters, and or uh, not the Dusters, the Hawaiians, I think. I don't know who they played last week. I- I don't know who they played last game either. But they beat I him think by. It was the Hawaiians. Oh, no, it was the Sultans. It was the Sultans. Yeah, you're right. It was the Sultans. They beat a the Micah, Sultans. A Micah Hescott, a team with Micah Hescott. Yeah. And Micah didn't even give up a run in that game, I don't think. So. And they they beat him by one, and, the, and then the Dusters took him to extra innings. So. This team is beatable. Um, Caleb will win more games than not and get more wins in tight games than not, but I don't think they're. In any shape or form, the Liners team we saw last year. Anyways, yeah. we're at an hour. Any final remarks? This has been a long podcast. It's been a good podcast. We covered a lot of stuff. I'm excited about this one. I like this new format. Do you like it better? I like it a lot better. I think it's a little more exciting. Yeah, we could talk about more players and not just who wins what. And my, uh, my final remarks got to be um, shout out to the... Uh, the Hispanic family that uh, had a girl. Oh my girl. goodness! Um, we're very excited for them. Uh, so maybe you can put a link to that video in there um, oh. with this fireside chat. It's gotta be the funniest video I've ever seen in my life. Um, so the the people that took that picture followed us on Instagram. <laughs> so, oh, me right? Yeah. So now I might actually have to post that picture. That's great. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a that was a treat. We were playing griffle ball, and a uh, forty of them came out of there for a gender reveal. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. We're three and five in griffle ball for all those that are listening. We suck. That's not that bad. We'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be all right. <laughs> If anyone wants a team, they are looking for another team, by the way. So if you're interested in playing on Sundays at a bar, Bridges in, in Griffith, need two players, come and play. It's a good time. Um, I think that's about it. Is Brett still sleeping? Uh, I haven't heard him. He's either sleeping or playing Fortnite. Oh, so. good night. All right. Well, I will uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, later, Leroy. Here's a big moment here. Big moment. Come on, come on. Thank <laughs> you.